In this presentation, we're going to talk about analyzing print quality. A lot of the content that we've put out up until this point has focused on improving the jetting to make changes to the quality of the print. And when we are focusing on the jetting, some of the parameters that we're working with that we can change are things like the ink formulation, the waveform, uh, some of the jetting conditions like the temperature, humidity, some of the settings for the ink supply, and then the print head itself. And then the results that we're looking for are the quality of the resulting print. So dots, lines, and text, are they in the right position? Are they focused? Are they crisp, easy to read? Uh, satellites, color bleed, things like that. The problem is that in practice, it's a really big jump to try to connect these two things. It's hard to look at a print with poor line quality and know whether a component of the ink needs to change, whether the waveform's wrong, or the ink supply has too much pressure. It takes a lot of knowledge and experience to be able to make this big of a jump and connect these two things. Something that can help with this is having a mechanism for feedback in between. So something that we can perform analysis and measurements as an intermediate step between these two things. Uh, in the case of jetting, that's the drop watcher. So measuring drop volume, velocity, trajectory. You can study, it's very easy to connect the impact of the waveform on the drop velocity and it's easy to connect the drop velocity to the amount of satellites and overspray that you see in the print. So having this you know, central test that you can do helps pull everything together. The problem with that is it works really well for jetting, but there's a lot of other things that are going on inside a printer. So for example, here's the same ink with two different waveforms. The top waveform has a little bit higher voltage, so it produces a drop that's got higher speed and you notice that it has some satellite formation. The lower waveform has a little bit less of an amplitude so there's a lower drop speed and there aren't any satellites. The question is which, which one of these two options is going to end up working better for you in your print? You run a print and you'll find that the high speed satellites print looks pretty good. If we take a look at the edges on that line, they notice that they're pretty straight. Whereas the low speed, no satellites option has very ragged edges and the resulting print is not gonna look very good when you add all of this up into an image. So as you can see, what it might appear better on the drop watcher or from the jetting perspective is not necessarily going to result in something that's going to look better on the print. And the print is really what we care about. So this introduces kind of a problem that we haven't discussed yet uh, in these courses, and that's you really need some sort of feedback mechanism in between the jetting and the printing to try to determine and teach you how to interpret the results that you're seeing on the drop watcher and translate those into good prints. Even if you can measure the volume and the velocity of the drops, it doesn't necessarily tell you what the right values are. And that's what we're looking back is this other feedback here that we're looking for. And that's where this print quality that we're talking about comes into play. Not to mention, there is more that's going on inside a printer and a printing process besides just the jetting. So the substrate that you're using matters, whether you're doing different coatings or treatments to that substrate, how you're drying uh, the stuff, all, all of that also has an impact on the print results, of course. And that's not really being studied with the drop watcher. So again, taking all of this big picture view of the printer, what can we use for feedback for everything that's going to help us interpret the results and learn how to improve them. To put some practical examples to this, uh, here's an image that's captured the same printer, same ink, 
same uh, waveform and all the other settings, just changing the substrate. You can see how big of a difference there is from one to the next. Uh, here's same printer, same ink, same everything, but this is just different coatings on the substrate. You can see the one on the left, uh, when the ink hits the paper, it's fixed, which is what you're looking for. And the one on the right, the uh, ink is moving all over the place. It doesn't have good wettability. So again, how do you take all of this that's going on in the printer that we're not going to see with a drop watcher, and we can't by studying the jetting, how do we take that information and interpret it? The answer to that is print quality. And the main test that we're going to talk about is dot quality. That's the number one test that you should be doing. And then we'll also talk about some of the other print quality tests that kind of round out some of the things that dot quality doesn't cover. Those are the feedbacks that we're looking for, and we'll get into those a little bit now. Um, as you know, printed images are formed uh, by dots, right? The image that you see is a collection of dots, and the position and size of those dots is going to impact what the print looks like. As you can see here on the left, uh, changing the size of the dots, having an inconsistent dot size, yields uh, something that's known as banding, uh, where you can see visible streaks in the image just by changing the size of the dots. In the middle, um, you can see what the impact of satellites looks like. So there's more dots than you would uh, expect, and the image is not going to be as sharp. And then all the way on the right, the dots are all the same size, but the position of them is not quite accurate. And again, it yields banding. So the size and position of the drop is really going to dictate uh, how the resulting image is going to look. And so that's the test that we're going to focus on, and we call that dot quality or dot positioning. It's a really simple test uh, to do. All you do is you print a grid of dots, and it can be the size of a print head. It can be wider than a print head. It depends on what you want to do. But you print a grid of dots, and then you're going to perform simple measurements on them. You're going to measure the size of the dots, the shape of them, and the shape is how round they are, as well as the edge of them. Is it a smooth edge or does it have ragged edges? The quantity of the dots, whether or not any dots are missing, or maybe there's extra dots uh, due to satellites. The position of the dots uh, on the substrate compared to the intended position. And then the darkness of the dots, uh, or the contrast, or if you've got an option for color, you can measure the color of the dots as well. Just by, with this one test, you're able to learn a lot of information about printing in the big picture. You can use this to really evaluate your printer as a whole, as you're changing inks, changing substrates, changing print heads. Really, no matter what component you change, you can go back to this one test and compare the results and really gauge your, pro your progress as you're going through your development process. To kind of give an example of that, here uh, is a list of, let's say, really important things for a printer. Um, of course, there's you know hundreds, but just to give an example, here's some important things. So the size of the dots, the placement, if it's going to print well, the drops need to land where you intend, uh, whether or not there's any satellites, all the jets need to be firing. The print needs to be uniform across the whole image. Um, the ink has to adhere well to the substrate. If you've got a really absorbent substrate, you don't want it to be too absorbed so that the color is lost. Uh, and then the printer itself, the mechanics of moving the substrate, and then the alignment if you've got multiple heads. So these are, you know, an example of basic things that every printer needs to do well um, that encompass hardware, ink, jetting, substrates, and we'll explore how this one test can cover all of these things. So as we mentioned, uh, dot positioning, you measure the size of the dots, which covers those. 
You also measure the shape of the dots, which in addition to the substrate also can tell you about satellites. The quantity of the dots on the paper. So if there's extra dots, then that's an indication that the satellites are actually showing up in your print. Um, or if there's not enough dots, that's an indication that the print head is not jetting, or at least some of the nozzles aren't. The positioning of the dots is a really good indication of how well the accuracy of the print is in terms of the trajectory of the drop through the air, but also whether there's any jitter. So in, as the substrate is being transported under the head, is there any jitter in that process? Are the heads well aligned with each other? Um, are all the different colors of print heads well aligned? All of this can be measured with the dot position. So as you can see, printing one grid of dots, which is a really simple test, evaluates all of these different things uh, in one shot. So it's a really valuable test, really easy to use. Um, it's difficult to actually and analyze this printed dot. It's really easy to print a grid of dots, but due to the resolution that you need and the proper lighting and all, everything like that, it's actually hard to capture the images. Um, so the way that you capture these images is a really advanced uh, measurement system. I'll start the video here. And quite often, it requires a lot of resolution over a pretty large area. So it utilizes something called a line scan camera. So the way a line scan camera works is that it captures images that are one pixel wide and it scans across the surface to generate the other dimension of the image. So it captures along the way. In order to do this well, you need really good lighting, you need really smooth uh, substrate transport, you need um, the proper camera and the image capture and everything like that, but then also you need the software to be able to analyze these images. Um, here's an example, as you can see, of a, of a standalone system that can do this type of thing. Uh, but there are also systems on the market that are built into the printer. So you can take, uh, you can easily go from drop watching analysis to printing a sample to analyzing the print quality all on one machine. So it's all integrated together and tied very, very well. As you can see, you're doing the drop watching here. Uh, when you're ready, you've you know made your change to the waveform, let's say. You can move the print head over. You'll print a pattern of dots. And then you'll move that pattern of dots, util utilizing the same substrate transport as you printed underneath a line scan camera, and it will capture the image of them. And then the same software that's doing the drop watcher drop and flight analysis is able to do the analysis on the dots and tell you position, quantity, shape, size, all of that information is still captured. And so it's all done on one system and it ties the entire process together and makes it really, really streamlined to connect all of those pieces together that we were talking about. We mentioned earlier that there are a couple of other print quality tests uh, that dot positioning doesn't really evaluate. So it's wise to have a couple of different options to kind of have a well-rounded evaluation. But again, dot, dot positioning and dot quality is the biggest one uh, by far. So if you only have to choose one, you would use that. Um, but an, ex an example of this type of test is intercolor bleed. So if you're printing multiple colors, depending on which colors are touching the other, there might be a difference uh, in how the inks react with each other. So in this image, for example, you can see uh, on the right side is uh, black ink printed directly on the substrate, whereas on the left side, it's black ink printed on top of another ink, which is on top of the substrate. 
And if you look at how the lines are formed, you can see that clearly there's a, a big difference in how jagged the edges of the lines are when the ink is on top of another ink as compared to directly on the substrate. So because the dot positioning is really handling only one color at a time, it doesn't do this type of testing. But intercolor bleed is another test that you can easily add to your arsenal with the same system um, to learn a little bit more about how the inks interact with each other as well as the substrates and the pretreatments and things like that. Another test that we should mention is if you're printing a solid area, what is the quality of that solid area? How uniform is it? Um, this is all also known as, as model. Um, and again, because you're printing dots uh, with dot positioning, it doesn't necessarily represent uh, this type of situation. So on your print quality target, you could also have a solid area uh, evaluation to study what is the ink really doing when it interacts with the substrate and with neighboring drops. The last type of measurement that we'll talk about is color. Um, so this is typically done with something like a spectrophotometer, which is measuring uh, the actual color of the print and how well it compares to the intended color. And again, this is a, a, separate, a separate type of um, analysis tool. This can't be done with a line scan camera typically. Um, and this is something else that could be added to the ar arsenal. But at the end of the day, uh, dot quality plus a couple of other supplementary tests is a really valuable tool for evaluating your printer as a whole. It's for benchmarking your system versus the competitors or versus how your performance from the year before or your performance with a different ink. Um, there's really no better tool uh, for evaluating a system as a whole than dot quality and print quality.